how to use form blocks. For the form block, I'm gonna click the plus icon. So where'd you go? Come on, well, plus icon. Then I'm gonna click form. And you're gonna see that the form block uploads with a few pre-filled things. It's taking up a whole bunch of the screen. No worries, I'm gonna show you how to adjust all the sizes of your blocks with the spacer block tutorial a little bit later on. So I'm gonna click into this plus I'm gonna click into this form block and I'm gonna click the pencil icon so I can edit the settings. First thing I need to do is to give this form a name. This is important because whenever somebody submits it, I want to know what they're submitting it for. So if I have a contact form or if I have an opt-in form, the name is going to be helpful. Also, if I use a button, as a light box, and I'll show you about this in a little bit, it's going to display this form name. So make sure that it's something that's also helpful for clients to know they're in the right place. So for example, I'm gonna say this is a freebie opt-in so that people, so that I know what people are opting in for and so other people do too as well. Next we have the button text. This is what people are gonna click. Just a word of advice, you never wanna use the word submit <laughs> when it comes to your buttons. You want something that displays urgency or shows that people are about to get something. So I'm gonna put download guide. Cool, now I've got some options over here where it says edit form fields, okay? So maybe I'm doing this for an opt-in and I'm not gonna need somebody's like subject or message. People are not leaving me a message. Maybe I just want their email and their name so that I get them on my email list. So I'm gonna click edit form fields and I can take these guys and I can delete them. So I can click the subject thing and delete it. I can click the message thing and delete it so that I only have the options that I want. But let's talk about these different fields because all of them are kind of important. So first off, we have the name field. Name field is important, especially when you're collecting email addresses because you want to be able to personalize your email addresses. You want to be able to say, hey, Jenny, here's this week's email. You don't want to be like, hey, you person. That doesn't work out so well. And obviously you're gonna need somebody's email address in order to be able to email them later, that's important. Some of the other fields that we have, we have the text area field. So this is like if somebody is trying to leave you a message and they have a problem and you wanna know what the problem is or you want more details about it, the text area is a good option. Next, we have the checkbox option. So here you can change the things that people have so people can tell you what they're opting in for, what they want, what they're interested in, what their problems are. Um, and when I want to change these checkbox fields, all I have to do is click options. I have option one. So website, consultation. I'm pretty sure that's spelled wrong. I'm just gonna delete that. Uh, but you can see that the checkboxes change accordingly, right? Next up, we have the survey area. So this is great if you uh, want to do a survey where you're trying to understand if people are satisfied with your services or what you can improve on or you're trying to get the opinion of a group. Um, you're going to ask the question up here. So where it says options, you have option one. Did you enjoy Clint Malley web design? Spelling words. So people can say, yeah, strongly disagree or strongly agree. You can do this with as many questions as you want. Next up, we have the line field. The line field is good if we're just trying to separate it. So maybe you have a section that's all about people's past history or trying to understand um, you know, what brought them to this point, or it's a detailed form, but you wanna be able to separate it into sections, a line field can be, uh, or a line can be helpful with that. Next, we have the date. Um, this is just helpful if you're trying to get some data on when they need something or whatever. The time, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen somebody use the time uh, block, but hey, it's there, it's a field, you can use it, right? Um, Text is, we already talked about this, is just a little bit smaller text. Phone number is super important, especially if you're gonna do any SMS campaigns, if you need somebody's phone number. Select is where you can create a drop-down menu, right? So people can, instead of clicking a checkbox where people can click more than one, a 
a select field allows someone to only choose one, right? So if people have to choose between options, the select field is all is awesome for that. And again, you can click into it, click options, and you can change the different options that are within that, add them and take them away too. Next up, we have the radio, right? So all the, the difference between radio and checkbox is radio, I can only check one. Um, and even though I can see multiple options. So it's similar to checkbox, uh, but I can only check one. So it's like select, but with radio. Uh, next up, we have the address. This can be important, especially if you're a local business and you're trying to do some mail or you need this as part of like HR stuff. Website is really important, especially if you're in the web design business so you can see their actual website or the websites that they like. Number, I actually have no idea what number is used for, but you can put it in here. The benefits of something like a number field is that people won't be able to put letters in there. So if you're like, hey, why not just put a text area for a phone and a text area for email? Well, it's gonna have certain qualifiers, like we're gonna have to see that at symbol, or we're just going to only have numbers when it comes to phone, right? So a number is like a good thing if you want someone to, to only be able to put numbers, right? I'm not sure what numbers, uh, you'd want them to put, but if that's what you want, you can put it in here. Currency, are they in the United States? Are they somewhere else? Are they using pounds? Are they using dollars? Twitter for their Twitter handle. So once you've edited your form fields and you have all the different form fields that you want, right? It looks good. It's exactly what you want. You have to think about post submit. What is going to happen after somebody says submit or download now? And you've got two options, really. Your first option is going to be a thank you. And this is where it just pops up and says, hey, thanks for, you know, saying, uh, filling out this form, which is okay. Uh, but usually what you want to do is you want to redirect them to another page. So if somebody is opting in for something free to download, you want to redirect them to a page where they can download it. And this is where the redirect tab is really important. So redirect, you can put the URL, you can either put it to one of your own pages or you can put it to another web address. But the important thing is you want to send them to a thank you page, which is pretty important. When you have that thank you page, you can then upload um, whatever stuff you want them to download. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. The next thing we need to talk about is design. So there's a few different things you can do. You can do Lightbox. So if you don't want to have this gigantic form showing, then you can click Lightbox. And then when somebody goes to click the form, it's going to all pop out. Boom. And then it's going to have this whole thing so that people can fill that out. It actually looks kind of nice. Next, we have on the design front, we can change where the button is going to be aligned. Um, and then we can also obviously change the text on the button, right? Last is going to be storage. Storage is where does the information that people are putting into the form go, right? So it can either be your email address, right? That whatever is, it's gonna automatically have your email address, whatever one is connected to your account. You can connect it with MailChimp. Uh, MailChimp has a free service that you can use to collect email addresses and to send mass emails. You can collect, uh, you can sync it with Google Drive so that everything opens up into a Google Sheet or populates into a Google Sheet so that you have everybody's stuff into one place. Um, here's also where you can turn on a recaptcha. I'm not sure, I, is that how you say? Google recaptcha, and this just basically authentifies, hey, this isn't a bot, this isn't spam, right? Um, so you wanna choose where this thing is actually gonna go, and once you have all of those things, your form block is ready to work. Remember, this is just part of our four course series. You can find the full courses all linked up in the description box below. Let's put the art back into content marketing. I'll see you on the next video.